Hey y'all, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods. Today I wanted to show you a super nifty quick tip on how to take your digital painting and make it feel like a texture rich retro print. Just like this Yellowstone National Park poster I made for the company 59 Parks. So let's get started. All right, I feel like I need to preface this with, this isn't a tip to cover up any painting flaws. I mean, it will, but if the whole piece you're not proud of, it's not gonna make that piece better, it's just gonna make it look retro. And the specific look that I was going for was kind of that mid-century, you know, travel posters, brochures, and to have that kind of print quality on it, but they were kind of blown out and uh, the colors were super saturated. So I wanted to do something like that. And this was for, again, 59 Parks. And if you're not familiar with that company, uh, you should definitely go check out 59parks.net. They have beautiful posters and pennants and other things related to the national parks and uh, just an amazing company. I was really happy to be able to do this one and Big Bend National Park as well for them and a slew of pennants. But uh, that's beside the point. Right now in this one, I want to show you, I kind of want to walk you through the, the different pieces to this because the underpainting on this is drastically different. If I turn off the textures here, you can see you lose a lot of that saturation. You lose the graininess. Even the value shifts in these, you know, larger shapes of color, blocks of color, they kind of go away. Let's peel back the layers of effects and textures by going to our layer panel over here. And uh, you'll see that I have a textures folder and we can go ahead and expand that. And you can see all the different things that I did to this to make it look retro, which admittedly is a little little extreme and everybody's situation is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna play with levels and all these adjustment layers differently uh, and that's okay. You're, you, you tweak it to what you need to do, but this is uh, kind of behind the curtain of what, what I did. When you have a full folder full of effects that are going on, if you wanna keep them all together like these textures here, in a folder, make sure that it's un it, you have it set to pass through. If you have it normal, it kind of treats it like it's merging all the layers inside there so you don't get the desired effects that you have uh, set on the inside on those individual layers. So set it to pass through. And we'll go back to this and uh, let's take a look at the very first texture that I have going on here. I pretty much made this whole thing with just two textures that I had imported as images I had this film plate and then I had this grain texture. Starting with this film plate, I have it set to overlay so that it toned it down quite a bit. And I even reduced the opacity on it. But if I put those back to normal, you can really see what that texture looked like. Very distressed, lots of scratches, some value shifts all throughout. You get some dark areas and light areas. And uh, all those just as is were pretty heavy handed. But by changing it back to overlay, and knocking back the opacity about 64%, you can see if I toggle this on and off, it just adds enough visual interest here. So if I, if I tap that, you'll see that there's the uh, these big areas of color. They don't have a lot of value change, which is less interesting and less natural than if it did, if it had some like little shifts in value, especially down here. And then if you look above this, I added like a levels adjustment and you can just you know, obviously move your sliders in here to to make that contrast a little more extreme or the light and dark areas. Uh, and that's just further refinement of that specific texture. And all these numbers will be very different for each of you and each of your projects. Like I've had to adjust these for if I had a really dark image, I'd have to obviously go back and adjust those to lighten that up a little bit so you could see all the details. So don't take these numbers ex like as, as exact science. It's not, you can really fiddle around with these and even these adjustment layers, you may want to use lighten or screen or whatever feels more appropriate. But for this one, I used overlay and I knocked back my opacity just a bit. Okay, moving down to grain, I'm gonna turn this layer off here, this film layer, and just show you the grain section here. Because it, this is a little, I made this, it's not difficult, but it, I don't think you necessarily need to have this. I just like the look of it. It felt like a sandpaper texture. And so uh, if I up the opacity there, you can see that this had just like this really coarse graininess to it, which I wanted, but you don't really need. I mean, you can honestly get the same effect by just doing, uh, if you go up here, filter, go down to noise and add noise. Uh, and you can get that that effect, but this just added it was just slightly different here because I wanted it just a little more tailored and uh, It's really up to your own preference 
When I told you I brought these texture images in, I didn't do much to them at all. I literally just went online, found some high res textures. This one's like a metal rust texture. I went to image mode, grayscale, maybe messed with levels, just if I want to pull out a specific uh, graininess or, or a scratch that I really liked. And you can do that by just messing with the levels. You can see more things are showing up. And uh, if I just, I'll take this over here. If I go to my, I'll turn off these textures here and I'll just add a, I'll add that texture here. And you'll see that I didn't really do much. As soon as I add what I, what I have the other one set to overlay and 60 something percent. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, you know, you can use like any of these different textures and now you got these little ripped edges. You got these little washed out corners. Nothing fancy, but uh, that's that's literally the technique I used. <laughs> all right, and lastly, underneath all the textures, I did a little bit of further refinement. I upped the vibrance. That just changes more of the saturation of the piece. And uh, honestly, this is just extra little stuff that just to tweak it, just to make it look perfect for what I was doing, up to that contrast a little bit. But what's really important here, I think, for you is this layer. Now, it wasn't big in this piece. On it, obviously, it says 2%, so I don't know why I have it on here. I'm sure it made a difference. Yeah, it kind of made, I can, I can barely see that little hint of yellow. Maybe I, maybe I could up it a little bit more. But what this is doing is, and why I use this, is if I have a lot of different colors that uh, are kind of, or I have a whole piece that I've made and I feel like it's using lots of different colors and sometimes it doesn't feel like all the colors harmonize, uh, this is a great way to help you bring a whole palette together. So if I was to put this back to, so this is normal, up to 100%. It was just a block of color, that feel like a color field that I covered over my entire piece. I go to my adjustment layer and I change it to color. And you'll notice that it evenly distributes that yellow throughout the entire piece. It changes the colors to that, whatever that overlay color is. And it's a good way to warm your whole palette as well. But, and you can do that with any color. If I did this with blue, you'd see it would do the exact same thing. So you'd lighten it. But if I change the opacity down, the, first, the more I take that down, the more those colors show through. But it, you can tell how it just kind of makes all those colors start to unify slowly. So that's how I did it. Let's take a look at it without textures. And with textures, I'm going to zoom in on that bison for a second because you can really see the difference. Without textures, and with the textures. You can see how it's blending all those colors together and the, the graininess in the other textured uh, film plate over top is kind of taking away some of those pieces that look a little bit more rough when I was painting. Now mind you, this is a very different process for me. I don't typically paint like this. I don't have, what how I, uh, the way I did it on this one is I had the texture layer and all the effects and everything on the top already and I was painting underneath it, which is really backwards and not how I do it. So for example, I was just painting, if I had another layer here, I was painting and I was seeing it like this. So you, I already saw it textured and with the effects and all the little dark areas and the scratches. I saw that as I was painting it, which made it kind of difficult for picking colors because I had to keep toggling my textures on and off to get new color, new color values. But it was just a really interesting different way to paint. Uh, I'd recommend not doing it, that way, doing it that way and just dropping the effects over top of it. Uh, after you've already done the digital painting, but that's how I did it and uh, hopefully that helps. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope these tips help you in your next project. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.